Welcome back to Forge Syndication. This is Ed. Today I'm going to be talking about CLSK Clean Spark Incorporation based on a vote I did on Twitter. Uh, so first, first things first, I'm going to be doing one month, one uh, one day analysis, five days, one hour, and then I'm going to go through the company's presentation. I'm going to give a little bit into a dive DD into the stock. Uh, regardless, in terms of the short term, that would be more of a longish term or different catalysts that might come through out of it. First things first, you get to see the 10 SMA is above the 30 MA, which is amazing news. The stock price is above the 50 SMA, which shows a bullish sign. You see that the MACD has been quite positive for quite a bit since the 29th of June and has retracted back up on a positive term, showing an reversal from what it had in the downtrend. And it's obvious here that it's actually pulled through. You get to see that the average directional index is a little bit too high for my liking, so we need to look into the one hour perspective. You get to see that the Boolean percent R here is sitting somewhere a little bit a li over. Uh, but but more closer to the neutral side you get to see the momentum is a lot higher than i would actually like it on usual but it still need to we still need to look into the one hour perspective the stock had seen 66 million in terms of volume where it actually trades somewhere around 6 million average uh just based on the chart here so taking a quick look we're going to see the five days one hour quickly Five days, one hour shows the MACD is declining towards perhaps a little bit of uh, a reversal towards the negative side. However, here's what I'm looking at. The times where it actually has declined something similar to that, it either did not decrease much in price or it just shot back right up in the morning. But this one was mainly because of a PR, but I'm going to be showing you a little bit of a different catalyst coming in through that could change that into towards a positive direction. You get to see that the stock right now is a little bit oversold. And after hours, the average directional index shows strength at 42. Taking a quick look here, we're going to be looking into the moving averages. We're going to do one month, one day quickly. And you get to see the moving average here. The stock is above the moving average, but it has been since the 25th. And the moving average is moving actually upwards. In terms of the trend lines, I would consider this to be where the channel is actually operating. You get to see that the stock price, in case if it actually continues to drip, uh, dip down, uh, we're looking somewhere around three quickly here, three sixteen to three twenty three, somewhere above three dollars and fifty cents in terms of the actual uh, channel. Although there's a difference in price in there, so the channel, we might see it actually dip down to the bottom side of the channel. However, the 50 SMA and the 200 SMA are both trading above. The stock is going to a bit more towards the neutral on the RSI after being overbought uh, for a little, for almost quite a, all day before that massive dip has happened. Now, going towards the Fibonacci retracements before going to the company's profile. I'm going to be drawing it here quickly to, rec uh, to quickly identify what the current supports and resistance on Fibonacci retracements and then going into, towards the traditional method. So this is around $2 you get to see. You get to see that it has not really followed Fibonacci retracements nicely, but um, you get to see that the current support uh, is sitting somewhere very close to the 361. So it's sitting currently at a support. The following one would be somewhere around 329 to 324. That would be the current support. In terms of resistance, you would have to look a little bit into the last day somewhere such as a 30 minutes gap in order to determine resistance. It's a little bit hard to say, uh, but it could be somewhere around 3087. Now going in quickly towards uh, the website, CleanSpark, so software that makes microgrids happen. And so what they're working on here from my understanding is multiple things, whether electric grids, micro turbines, generators, wind generators, Solar, sorry, fuel supply generates solar panels, energy storage, and customer buildings. And so what they do is they actually work with storage on batteries on those. Now going quickly, you get to see that there is actually a bit of movements here. Now those were actually awarded um, as insiders. So we get to look into here. You get to see a bit of awards for shares on insiders for around two dollars eleven and four sixty five earlier in January. So it seems that the company has had a bit of a good profile previously. So now this is the presentation as of in June. So it is the most up-to-date one. You get to see quickly uh, their CFO, CFO actually has moved up from uh, last October to being a CEO. And so they have a new CFO for 2019, which is not a bad thing. Uh, they have basically two kind of energy and modeling management systems, the MVSO platform and the Impulse platform. You can see it here on the screen. You can pause if you want to read it. Uh, going in quickly here, you can see an industry validation that they're actually 10th on the line 
for the score. Uh, higher than the General Electric, ABB, Eton, Loghead, Martin, and OETI. So there is a lot of gap in there in the market where they can actually still uh, improve a little. But you get to see that their overall total score is really close towards high 60s. Oh, well, sorry, to the lower 60s. So market opportunities, they are looking for expansions here from 3.5 gig, uh, gigawatts to 20 gigawatts uh, with nearing around 40 billion growth rate from 20 to 2029. 20, I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, quickly here, you get to see that their sales are actually aiming for 222% increase from 4.5 million in 2019 to 10 million in uh, t end of 2020. So that could be good news in terms of earnings. You get to see as well here quickly that they have uh, they've completed a uh, acquisition of P2K LABS, so P2K Labs, um, for basically four different things: increased top line revenue and profit margins, strengthened management team, turns cost cent uh, centers such as marketing design and, and engineering into profit centers, enhances clean spark and software service offerings. Uh, now they do basically, from my understanding, is hardware, storage, softwares, and everything in between. Now, in terms of different, uh, in terms of the cash they have on hand, is around 4.5 million. Um, and taking a quick look here, you get to see that the actual projected uh, is 10 million, with an increase of around 100 percent per year following that. Um, and there was a bit of a look here quickly. I'm just trying to pull it up. In terms of their total liabilities, you see that they have around 10, close to t current liabilities at around 4.6 million. So their cash in hand looks to be very close to there. Uh, in terms of the actual uh, revenue, seems to be positive. So it's not very much scared about an offering at that point. That's been my DD on the stock. What do you think about the stock? Make sure you mention it down in the comments below. Make sure you share, subscribe, and like. If you'd like, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle down is in the description below. And have a wonderful day.